Hey, it's Justin Moore from Trending Family, and here are this week's top five trending news that are influencing families. So Digiday covered that Meredith is developing a slate of 10 original series for IGTV. So according to Andrew Snyder, who is the SVP of video at Meredith, uh, the first of these is gonna premiere um, later this year. You've got Parents Magazine, who's gonna have a show with some celebrity moms on IGTV. Um, Eating Well is gonna have a, a vegan cooking show. Travel and Leisure is going to have a travel show with some Instagram influencers. So of course, it's still very early days with, with IGTV. And, and Snyder mentioned that that's one of the advantages of, of jumping in so early as you can establish a leadership position. And I think that's something that you see when, when these platforms develop these new formats um, is that you know the, the cutting edge brands definitely want to be out there diving in, trying new things, um, but the majority of brands kind of want to sit on the sidelines and see what happens. So props to Meredith for jumping into this. So according to eMarketer's latest ad spending forecast, this year will mark a milestone for digital video advertising in the US. So it's going to grow nearly 30% to over $27 billion and that Facebook and Instagram is gonna capture nearly a quarter of that, which is pretty mind boggling. Um, they also mentioned that Snapchat's US video revenues will reach almost $400 million this year, which is up almost 20% over last year. Um, Twitter is gonna derive more than 55% of their total US ad revenue from video this year. Um, and eMarketer mentioned that even though they don't consider um, YouTube a social network, it's hard to ignore. I mean, they're gonna generate uh, over $3.3 billion from video ad revenue this year alone. So uh, I think the banner headline here is that video spending is just gonna continue to increase. So the New York Post discussed that BuzzFeed is dipping its toes into the retail business by opening up a toy store. So they're gonna have kind of an unusual retail strategy, which is to change their decor and merchandise every few months. So the store is gonna be called Camp, and there's gonna be toys and uh, fun things in front for kids, and then in the back, there's gonna be kind of an Instagramable, experiential uh, place for people to take selfies, right? I mean, this really isn't that surprising coming from BuzzFeed. I mean, they've do done a lot of these types of experiential uh, pop-ups and these types of things. Um, you've, you've seen a lot of direct-to-consumer brands opening up brick-and-mortar shops. Um, you've seen a lot of publishers like BuzzFeed and like Tastemade and like Refinery29 doing these types of things as well. So, and it seems as though there there is a consumer appetite for this. So um, it'll be interesting to see how this pays off for BuzzFeed. So TechCrunch covered that baby food company Once Upon a Farm just raised a big Series B round to help it expand its direct-to-consumer business, uh, partner with more U.S. grocers, and build out a wider assortment of baby products. So uh, the startup was founded uh, in 2015 by Cassandra Curtis and Ari Roz, and they also list actress Jennifer Garner and former General Mills president John Forker as co-founders now as well. Um, it's pretty interesting. I mean, you think of other uh, digitally native vertical brands, and influencer marketing is a big part of their strategy to get the word out to consumers. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Once Upon a Farm take a similar approach here. And the Washington Post covered that for many millennials, a regular visit to a primary care doctor may be a thing of the past. They interviewed quite a few millennials. They described what the experience is like of going to a doctor's office, right? I mean, especially if a millennial lives in the city, right? You have to rent a car, uh, you have to go wait in a waiting room, uh, and it's just this very drawn out process um, as opposed to something like urgent care where you know they have evening and weekend hours, you go in, you pay 40, 50 bucks, and, it's, and you're done with it, right? You look at all of these other services that are catering to millennials these days, online grocery delivery, uh, you can you know just get anything delivered to you on demand, uh, right? And so they, they have come to expect these kinds of, of services. Um, and so, and you look at other alternatives that they have, right? I mean, there's these retail clinics carved out of, of drugstores. There's these freestanding urgent care centers. And then there's telemedicine. I mean, I know for my family, you know, we can video chat with our doctor now. And if my kid has a sickness, I don't want to bring him into the doctor's office. I just want to, you know, video chat with my doctor. So, so, and you can imagine as millennials start to have their own kids, these trends are going to only continue. So it's not that surprising that this type of um, older dynamic with the healthcare system may be a casualty of millennials' preferences moving forward. <laughs> 